Today, we're talking about an anime filled with fairy tales, magic, tournament arcs, and the biggest betrayal in anime. And for this, I'm not talking about the characters on the anime, but the animation studio backstabbing the anime into the worst possible drop-in animation ever released to this date. Marhen Madhen is the 2018 anime based on the works of the late Tomohiro Matsu that tragically died of liver cancer on 2016. As his last work ever released, people were hopeful that it would get the adaptation it deserved. Little did they know that they would get done dirty by the same studio that adapted Akisora. This anime has a well-known yet different story. The series focuses on Hasuki, an introvert that loved stories since she was a child. After an encounter with a hooded woman, she finds herself in a mysterious school. There, she meets other girls like Shizuka, who explains that they are in a magical school where young girls known as Madhen use magical texts based on fairy tales to fight black things that eat books. But don't worry about them, they are really not that important to the story. Anyway, she learns that she has inherited the Book of Cinderella, and thus her journey begins. Now, before we start talking in depth about the anime, here is a fair warning that I will be talking about some of the plot of the story as well as showing some scenes that can be spoilers but are necessary to express my views on this anime. So with that said, let's move on to this video. In general, this story is not the most creative, neither the highest quality in writing. There are too many threads that aren't really talked about and some world building that feels incomplete. But it is understandable as it is mentioned that the author died while finishing the work, so the story is expected to be rough around the edges. At some points, we're starting to get used to the life in the magical school, and the next moment, a newly joined girl is representing the Japanese school into what can only be described as the World Cup of Magical Girls. We are presented with these monsters that are harmful to our lives, and the Mad Hen are supposed to fight and destroy them, but we only get to see them bashing each other through the whole series. But don't get me wrong, I think that was a good choice, as I thought that the tournament arc between magical girls was way more interesting and unique than yet another magical girl anime where the girls fight some brainless monsters. As for the girls and their powers, Although using fairy tale powers as a conduct has been used in many animes before, I really thought that there was something unique about the way this was implemented in the anime. Mostly the girls only used books coming from their own heritage. Japanese used the stories like The Tale of the Princess Kaguya. The French used books like Puss and Boots. British The Legend of the King Arthur, and so on. With the most notable exceptions being our main protagonists that found the long lost book of Cinderella, and of course, the Americans using books that were altered to be used by them. This made it feel like the author was really trying to develop a unique story with a global perception rather than the general tropes that we get to see in this type of shows. And for me, I was really enjoying it. Of course, that is, until episode 9 hits. You see, during the first few episodes, I could say that the animation was not the best, but at least it was stable. We had an interesting story with an average quality of animation, which for most people, I would say that's a win. But after episode 8, something weird happened. The animation studio decided to take two weeks off to quote-unquote improve the animation quality, which in the previous episodes had started to see a small drop in quality. So everybody was happy with it. I don't know about most people, but I would rather wait a few more weeks for some quality in animation rather than to get a rush job that diminishes my viewing experience. But no one was ready for what was coming next. Oh god, the humanity! How could they do this to my girl? We had what can only be described as the work of art of a 9-year-old. Faces that don't even resemble a human face. Body parts that are either way too large or too small. And animation made using Flash. It makes you think, what did they even do in those two weeks that they took to improve the animation? I wonder how bad would the animation have been if they had released it in the normal schedule. Maybe just sticks and circles. Having made an in-depth look on how things turned out this way, I was surprised to see how poorly this anime was managed. Staff constantly leaving, 
assistance being bounced around every episode, studio management that was shifting the blame away from them. Any typical issue that you find in an animation studio, you name it and it will be most likely part of these reasons why this anime failed. It is no secret that in the past, studios have treated their animators like disposable tools, and this could not be better depicted than in this production of March and Maiden, where you could see the animation devolving from episode to episode until it hit a breaking point in episode 9. So it's no surprise that after that, the studio only released one more episode before putting the production on hold, leaving episodes 11 and 12 up in the air without knowing if we would ever get a conclusion for this anime. And it wasn't until one year later that the episodes were finally released, but at this point, it was too late. Yes, the issues were fixed, the animation looked back in form as it looked back in the first episode, and we got a fulfilling ending to the story. But it was one whole year later. Everybody had lost interest in this show or decided to erase it out of their memory, out of embarrassment that people would make fun of them for actually watching this train wreck of an anime. Later on, with the release of the Blu-ray, the animation studio took the time to fix the quality issues and deliver an actually good animation that the story and the author really deserved. And platforms like Crunchyroll already updated the library, so the people will never have to see those horrible friends anymore. Even now, trying to find the original animation is difficult. But, as I said before, it is too late. No matter how much you try to erase these mistakes, People will always remember this anime as the worst managed animation production with the deepest drop of quality. RIP Marhen Madhen. And with that, we come to the conclusion of this anime review. What did you guys thought of this anime? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, see you guys next time.